Hi, the PCBs I want to use for my series about GNU slash Linux and Ethernet arrived. And here you can see the result. So I have these two lovely PCBs and with them I hope I can continue my tutorials about GNU slash Linux and Ethernet. So basically, if you remember my presentation about the Ethernet transmission line, what I did is I put the processor and the medium access control here on this Mac card and I've put the Phi and the physical connector here on a second PCB and I've connected them over a pin header. The big advantage here is if I want to use another um, yeah, transmission medium, for example fiber optical, then I just need to connect a different board, maybe design the board and then connect it or just connecting an evaluation board over jumper wires and then I'm ready to go. So this makes it very flexible. And with this PCP I can now finally start progressing in this series about GNU slash Linux and Ethernet so we can discover more about how Ethernet works and then finally we, my final goal is to connect this system to a Raspberry Pi and to write an Ethernet driver to it so we can control this system over standard Linux network methods and functions. But this project here was made possible by yeah, a lot of people and I want to use this opportunity to say thank you. First of all, uh, thank you to Wisnet who, spo who um, donates some um, or this chip here. So this is the Wisnet W7500 chip with a built-in um, TCP offload engine which I will use as a Mac here and which is very easy to program. Maybe I will do some videos about this later. Then I want to say thank you to all my viewers who donated um, some money to me for building up the system and the big biggest thank you goes to Euros, a viewer of mine who helped me doing the designs, who ordered the PCBs for me and who also assembled the PCBs which is really cool because soldering this fire here with a soldering iron would be quite hard for me. <laughs> and yeah, in today's video I want to show you a little bit about how these PCBs are ma or were made, what the process was. Yeah, so let's dive into it. So first, I, um, I had to do some designs. So here I have the KiCat project for the um, Mac card. And here basically you can see the schematic. And let's jump right into the PCB. So this here is the PCB. And this is a version I have made, but Euros modified this version a little bit to make it easier for production. And the second PCB, here I only made a draft of the schematic. So it looks like this and yeah, this is basically the schematic for the um, yeah, twisted pair phi card containing the phi here. And here I also did, uh, I did a, also um, a draft for the PCB, but Euros reworked it. He also reworked the schematic and this here is now the final result. So after the designs were made, the next step was to order the PCBs and also to order a stencil for the PCBs. Because the cool thing is, Euros had a um, PCB oven available. So you end with the stencil, you could put soldering paste to the pads here and then just place the components and then run them through an oven and that's much more <laughs> comfortable than soldering everything down with a soldering iron. Okay, so let me show you some, some videos about how the PCBs were made. So here in this video you can see the stencil and here we have the soldering paste and this machine basically um, yeah, um, apply the soldering paste to the um, pads and the stencil made sure the soldering paste really only remains at the pads and not on the whole PCB. So Euros had very good equip or 
was able to use very good equipment here. So he even could use a pick and place machine, which automatically placed the parts on the PCB. We can see this here. So here we have different the different parts which goes on the PCB. The pick and place machine picks them and automatically drops them on the PCB on the right um, on the right location. So for my master thesis, I had to pick and place a quite big PCB completely by hand. It's really a lot of work, so it's really cool if, if you have a pick and place machine which can help you with that. Okay, and then after the all components were placed, the next step is to um, to bake the PCB in a PCB oven. And this one you can see here. Oop. Yeah, so here the PCB goes out of the pick and place and now it's driving into the oven. What you can also see here is um, only some piece. So the PCBs were not assembled completely because we only had limited samples of the W7500 and the um, Ethernet Phi here. So the idea was, okay, first just assemble two boards completely and test them if everything works and then um, at least assemble the um, the yeah more cost more costly components later and here you can see how the yeah pcp is driving into the pcp oven and at the end they came out of the oven the oven is completely temperature controlled and yeah now the um, parts are really on or correctly soldered on the um, PCB and the PCBs are almost ready to use. The only thing typically pick and place machines can't place are um, through hole parts like these pin headers here or the RJ45 connector here. So these have to be soldered by hands. But yeah, but the cool thing is all the SMD parts were already were already yeah placed and sold correctly so that's saving a lot of time so once again thank you euros for um, helping me building the pcps and doing all the assembly for me it this was an incredible time saver for me and to two donators um, who donated some um, to me for this project i will send out the pcps um, as soon as I have a working version of software. So I think I will send them out in January timeframe. So, but I will contact you quite soon. So maybe over Christmas, you will receive an email from your message from me to give me the addresses. Cool. So now I have really nice looking and very professional assembled PCBs, which I can use for my GNU slash Linux and Ethernet tutorial. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.